Okay. Uh, move mastery number seven. Hopefully it sums up everything we've been doing today. It is an add on to all the other exercises we've done. Okay, it is something to add on. Now tomorrow you're gonna notice in the workout, it's gonna be combo exercises. It might have these in. What it might have, for example, might have six regular lunges, then four lateral lunges, as many of those rotations as you could get in, in the time period that it, that it adds on to. That's a progressing style of workouts. It might have three regular push-ups, two Cobra push-ups, as many of those. It's putting combined sets in uh, more with what we're doing in, in the same set. So today, movement mastery number seven. Um, what's different about this one is you're gonna have seven movements to turn in, okay? What I expect as far as you turn them in is you being able to demonstrate the exercise to the standard and turn it in, okay? It could take five seconds per exercise. It could take 10 seconds. It kind of depends on your own comfort. Um, of that. All right. So I have a new place. I am doing the movement mastery. I'm doing it in the middle in the front of my classroom because I finally arranged my classroom, which many of you have not had the fortune of seeing. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, move to my other camera and get started with movement mastery. And then I'm going to do a sound check once I get over there. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to stop this video and I'm gonna move over here so everyone gets set. Again, how it's gonna be is I'm gonna do the movement. You're gonna go try the movement, see if there's any questions on it. We're gonna go through them, all seven, and then we're gonna come back, close it out, and then we're gonna be done. Can I get a thumbs up? Hopefully I get all 53 of you give me a thumbs up. Okay, cool, I have good pay attention, okay. Some of you aren't, oh, there we go. We got more, more, all oh, waiting for more of you. Come on, Tommy, give me a thumbs up. Come on, Jade and Ella. Jayhan, Ayala, Ryan Kushner, Reagan, come on, uh, let me see you guys. All right, good, I got more of you, all right. Here we go, moving over here. All right. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, guys. Uh, hopefully you can see me okay. I can see myself. So we're going to go over movement mastery number seven, seven exercises. The first one's going to be a cobra push-up, okay? Now, the big thing is you're going to be laid flat on your stomach. Your elbows are going to be tied to your sides, okay? What we're going to do here is our elbows are going to be tied to our sides underneath us, and we're going to extend up. The key when we extend up is our hips stay down on the ground. So it's going to look like so. So we're going to be here on the ground, okay? What's going to happen is our legs are going to be straight back. We're going to be here, our hands are by our sides, and we're going to come straight up like so. Notice my hips stay fixated to the ground. I come up, nice little back arch. Should be a little stretch here. We come up like so, okay? Really an exercise working our triceps. Again, one of the key items is our elbows are in tight to our sides here. Okay, and just our bodies coming up off. Go and try it. Going back to this camera, make sure you guys are good on it. Try the Cobra push-ups, get four or five reps in. Make sure we understand it. Hips are fixated to the ground, back arches up. Elbows tight to the side, Luke. Make sure your elbows are right by your side. Good, try it a couple times. All right. There's no questions, we'll move on. Go and come back. If you have any questions, raise your hand. It looks like we're pretty good. All right, moving on to the next one. Next exercise, lateral lunge. Lateral lunge, this one's really hard for people to get right. 
The big thing is your feet are going to be wide, but your feet are going to be facing straight forward. So if you look at my feet, they're facing straight forward. Now, the thing a lot of people do wrong is they lean forward when they do it. They come forward. What we want to do is we want to stay back. So watch where my hip is in accordance to my knee when I come to a side. I come backwards. Then I come the other way, backwards. I sit way back, way back. So from the front of you, this is the more front of you. My hips are inside my feet. My feet are wider than my hips. I come to the side, and I sit back. Come to the other side, and I sit back. Sit back. When I sit back, I'm pushing through my heel. Pushing through my heel. Sit back. And go and try it. Remember, you're on the side, sitting back. You're sitting like you're sitting on a seat, under control. Sit back. Sit back. Go and try it. I'm going to come over here. Give it a couple of reps. Sit way back. Get as low as you can. It might be hard at first, and we're working on flexibility. Sit back, pushing through the heels. Make sure the toes are facing straight forward. Good, not bad from the ones I can see. Good, very good for baseball players there, Mr. Whitford. Okay, good, good, good. All right, and come back. Now, once again, guys, I want to remind you, the common thing on this one, this one is done wrong so often, the common thing is someone just to take their weight to the side and just kind of drop. If you're dropping like this, that's wrong, okay? We want to stay upright and sit through our heel back. Sit through our heel back. Okay? It should be kind of difficult. That's why it's one of our, our more advanced movements. So make sure you pay attention to that. Remember, if you have any questions, this recording will be uploaded. You can watch again, or you can go to the movement mastery sheet. Okay? All right, next one is a full sit-up. Okay, now, a lot of people want to put their feet underneath an item for a full sit-up. We don't need to if we have strong enough abs, okay? When we put our feet underneath something, we generally use our hip flexors to pull that. A full sit-up really works the whole core. I'm going to show you how to do it correctly. First thing is I'm going to lay down on my back, okay? The next thing is I'm going to push my heels into the ground, okay? So they stay there. Now what I'm going to do, I don't care where your hands are. A lot of people stay behind your head or across your chest. I don't care where they are for this. So push your heels into the ground, okay? Make sure your tailbone is into the ground. Come all the way up. All the way down. All the way up. Now notice when I come all the way down, I make sure my shoulder blades hit. My shoulder blades hit, I come all the way up. Notice my feet aren't coming up. I'm keeping my heels to the ground. Full sit up. Down and up. I'm controlling myself. I'm not lifting my glutes off the, off the ground when I'm coming down. I'm controlling myself, a little bit slower of a motion. Go ahead and try a full sit up. Don't put your feet under anything. Heels fixated on the ground. Good, Luke. Good, all right. Go ahead and come back. Next one's going to be a sumo squat. Okay, now, don't over oversimplify this, but also don't overanalyze this. The first thing you've got to understand is we're in a sumo position. All the sumo position is, is our toes pointed out at a 45 degree angle. When I say a 45 degree angle, if our hips are straight forward, 45 degree angle from there. Get a little closer to show you. This is straight out, 45 degree angle. Okay, that's where my toes are pointed. My heels are wider than shoulder width apart. And then I'm just going to go into a squat motion. So I'm going to sit back like so. Remember, my knees align with my toes. So my knees always go direct motion where my toes are like so. I don't want to go in or out. Direct motion of the toes. So I'm here. Sit back and down. Again, knees don't go over toes either. They align with the toe. Where your knee should point, it should point in between your big toe and your second toe as you sit back. Pushing through your heels, sumo squat. Hey guys, getting old. It's, my knees are sore. I've never had sore knees. I mean, I'm getting old. All right, sumo squat, wide. Sit back, down and up. Down and up. Go ahead and try it. Nice and wide, pushing through your heels. 
Sit back and up. Good job, Grace Day. Good job, Karan. Good job. Good job, Mindy, Tanny, Whitford. Just giving you a hard time, Tanner. Good job, Ava. You don't have to change it. All right, moving on to the next one. All right, now we have the frog squat. This one's going to be really hard for a lot of you to get down, okay? And I understand that. So really pay attention to the detail that I am, I am telling you. So first thing is, my feet are going to be in a sumo squat position. The only difference is my toes are going to be facing more straight forward rather than a 45 degree angle. Next thing is I'm going to take my elbows and I'm going to place them inside my knees here. Okay, that's where I'm going to be. Now, the hard part is what's going to happen is our glutes go down and then they come up and our back stays as straight as possible. So if I come into this motion, I'm starting here. Now my glutes drop and then my glutes come up. My glutes drop, my glutes come up. Glutes drop, glutes come up. Glutes drop, glutes come up. You should really fill this in the hamstrings. Yeah, I've also called this a hamstring squat before. In the past, more commonly known as a frog squat. So once again, feet are wide in the shoulder width apart. Elbows are inside the knees. Your elbows stay fixated here. And now all the moves is your glutes down and up. Down and up. Down and up. You can see why it's called a frog squat. If you want to rib it, that's fine. That's on you. But don't rib it on the video. I don't need to hear anyone rib it. A rib is the sound of the frog makes, right? Okay. All right, ready? Like so. All right, go and try a frog squat. I'm going to pause here because I want to know if there's any questions. Okay, keep those elbows a little wider, Alex Blast, with your feet. Remember, your feet are wider than the shoulder width apart. Good, 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 good. Wider feet there, Luke, please. There you go. Good, again, knees always track. Good job, good job, good job. All right, I want to pause. Are there any questions on this? If there are, please raise your hand. Again, this video will be up. Also, guys, the video of um, and the Movement Mastery, there's videos of all this. All right, next one, a good morning. A good morning. Now we're really going to work those hamstrings. Hamstrings, commonly a, 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 an underused movement. Hold on one second. There's a waiting room. We've got to run in. All right, now a good morning. On this one, our feet are in that jump stance, which is hip wide and wide apart. Let's review stances. We have a jump stance. Feet are closer. We have an athletic stance. We're athletic. Then we have a wide stance. We have three different stances now. So now we're going to be in a jump stance, which is where we'd be right before we jump. Now, what we're going to do on a good morning is we're going to slightly bend our knees. Okay, you notice how my knees are bent as opposed to locked. They're bent here. They're going to stay right there. Notice I'm an ear, shoulder, hip alignment, something we've talked about a lot. Ear, shoulder, hip alignment. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pivot only at the hips. I'm going to show you a correct way, and then I'm going to show you a wrong way, because I really want you to understand. Correct is my back stays straight. I bend over as far as I can and come up like so. Bend over, come back like so. What a lot of people are going to do is this. Watch my upper body. That is wrong. We don't want to bend. Correct. Wrong. Correct. Wrong. Watch my feet. Again, correct, wrong, okay? So my knees don't bend at all once I get them set. I bend only at my hips, only at my hips. You should feel this in the hamstrings. Again, the hamstrings moving over those muscles. Remember, we got the semi-tendinosis, the semi-membranosis, and the biceps femoris in our hamstrings. All right, go and try a good morning. Go and try a good morning. Back stays straight, feet are in a jump stance. You should know all these terms, all these words. Good, good, good. Back straight, Luke. It'll be hard for you back straight. Keep those shoulders back. Good, good, good. Okay, now guys, let me show you a little trick here because I see a lot of you, a lot of you, what you're doing, all of you, a lot of you are doing this. Okay, so a little trick I think you guys want to do it. It's what I do is I pretend like I'm pulling back, like I'm pulling on some straps, hold my shoulders back. And 
then I go do it. So my shoulders stay back. A lot of you let your hands hang, which is naturally letting you roll. You come like this and naturally straightens you up. Okay? I'm going to try it a couple more times. Good mornings. Here's how they get their hand. You ready for it? You ready for it? This is the best ever, right? Good morning. Good morning. Okay? I think I'm still fine. All right. Come back, raise your hand if there's any questions. Are there any questions? We good to go? Good, look good, look good. Good job, Jack. All right, last one is gonna be a wide mountain climber, guys. This one is easy yet hard, okay? A lot of people on the mountain climbers, guys, a correct mountain climber is done from the push-up position, okay? So a lot of times what we do when we do a mountain climber is we tend to get a little lazy, guys, be included, and we tend to elevate our glutes up. This is incorrect. This should be the position we're in, push-up position. So now we're going to do this to a wide mountain climber. All the wide mountain climber means is we're taking our feet flat outside our hands and alternating. Okay? As opposed to a regular mountain climber, we're trying to take our knees to our elbows more. So if you look at me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my foot outside and then outside. Outside, outside. Wide mountain climber. Well, it's really pretty difficult, a lot more difficult than people think. Okay, again, good push-up position, outside, outside. And the goal is to get your feet flat. Again, working flexibility here as well, okay? You want to get your feet flat every time. So if you look at me from the side, I'm in this good push-up position, outside, 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 outside. All right, you want to try it. Wide mountain climber. Good job, Luke. Good job, good job, good job. All right, go ahead and come back. I'm going to turn off my camera over here. All right, come back over here. All right, now you guys should all see me. Okay. All right, guys, real quick, let's close this out a little bit. I want to say some key things um, so we understand completely. Um, one thing I want to say, guys, is I'm going to go over the names and movements and some key terms I use so we understand to kind of align learning a little bit. Um, first of all, you should have noticed in all these movement masteries that there's a lot of key details to doing an exercise correctly. And those key details align with being able to move your body in the correct motion to get the ultimate performance out of the muscles. That's why I called it movement mastery, okay? So today on the Cobra push-up, some key points where elbows tight to the body and we only pivot at the hips. Our hips stay flat on the ground. Cobra push-up, hence the name. Looks like you're coming up to a Cobra. Also, you might have noticed that aligns with the Cobra pose, which is very similar. So think about it, you're going from laying flat on your stomach to a cobra pose every time. Okay, very, very important. Um, next one, lateral lunges. Key points where I push through my heel, my body weight comes backwards, knee stays in alignment, side to side, lateral lunge. Next one was a full sit up. Again, heels on the ground, control it up with your abs. Don't lift up your hips to do it. You'll try not to activate those hip, activate those hip flexors. Next one was a sumo squat, feet wide in a sumo position, wide position, 45 degree angles from our hips of our feet, sitting back in the motion, down and up, sumo squat. Next one was our ever challenging frog squat. Again, feet are wide, but toes are straight forward, elbows inside our knees, making our behind go down and up, hips go down and up in the frog squat position. Next one, good morning. Feet are, knees are stiff, not locked out. You'll notice me say many times, especially when you get in regular weight training, we never lock out our elbows or lock out our knees on anything we do. Remember, this is locking completely out. We want our knees kind of bent a little bit in that. We're pivoting at the hips, keeping our back completely straight the whole entire time Good on good mornings. Those are good mornings. 
and then wide mountain climbers from a push-up position, taking our feet flat outside of our hands and alternating, okay? That is our movement mastery for today. So now your goal is to go, make sure you understand it, make sure you can put it on a flip grid. Now keep in mind, guys, movement mastery is exactly what it means. It's meant to be the you practice it. Now let me tell you the teaching philosophy in this. Teaching philosophy is it's taught for you and guided practice like we're doing. I teach it, you practice it, and then you go on and perfect it. Once you feel it's perfected, you show it. So we have all different levels in here. Some of you could probably go do it now. So when you go and do it, make sure you go and do it perfect every rep. You're gonna feel it as a little workout. Now, if you're ultra advanced and you wanna put this in a workout, put all these seven movements in a circuit afterwards. Put them all in a circuit, do 10 reps of each, try to go through the circuit three times. Okay, if you're just beginning, just practice the movement and get something out of it. Again, we're working on getting our bodies moving here, okay? Are there any questions on that? If you understand, give me a thumbs up right now. Okay, my people, my cow, oh, wow, I got a lot of them. Okay, cool, 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 good. We got a good turnout here. Um, cool, cool, cool. All right, good, good, good. Okay, now. Next thing I'm going to say, guys, we got all the movements in, okay? We have a good amount of movements. With these movements, guys, you could do a full workout at any time, and that's the whole thing I'm trying to show you with this. Okay, now keep in mind this week's going to be our, our designer workout number four, okay? So you're going to design your fourth workout. Okay, starting next week, we go in more workouts. That are, they're going to open up more for you and your goals. So Monday, we're going to talk about goal setting. Goal setting is very important. As a teenager, I feel like it's very important you set goals. Now, a lot of you might have goals for like 10, 15, 20 years from now, which is great. Okay, that's great. But the key to goals is to have benchmarks along the way. Okay, and this goes into a life talk. Your number one benchmark in life right now, and it might sound easy, is to graduate from high school. Okay, and to get everything out of high school possible. Okay, and getting stuff out of high school comes at varying levels. Okay, varying levels. It might be to develop study skills. It might be to attain leadership skills. It might be to be better at subject areas. Okay, it might be relationship based. Okay, as far as building relationships. But all goals have benchmarks along the way. Okay, and believe it or not, everything you're learning in this class, let me give a quick PE plug, can help you with any goal you have in life. Okay, because it's proven that moving the body and physical fitness of the body help someone be successful, okay? I don't know if any of you follow me on Instagram, but I had a little post yesterday that said, successful people sweat twice a day. I'm a firm believer in that. And I'm not talking about sweating necessarily with exercise, okay? I'm talking about working hard to build up a sweat. It might not be a physical sweat, this is more like a metaphor, okay, of sweating, but successful people sweat twice a day in everything they do, okay? And you might have saw that on my Instagram yesterday if you follow me on Instagram, okay? I have all my social media open. Guys, I have nothing to hide with them The teenagers can't see. Like, I made a really cool TikTok yesterday. You don't follow me on TikTok, guys. Jeez, I'm very jealous. Like, all these other teachers have way more followers. I guess I have envy. I don't know. But if you don't, I mean, I'm telling you, it's all for you guys to make you guys better, okay? So remember, all goals have benchmarks along the way. Okay, and we'll talk a lot about goals next week. So closing it out, guys, obviously map my run tomorrow and Friday, Moon Mastery number seven today. Thursday, we're gonna work out together with Workout with Coach and Reflection. Um, Friday, we're gonna, you guys are gonna design your own workout and you're gonna, the start of turning your nutrition log. Okay, and I kinda wanna know, guys, if you have anything on nutrition along the way, go ahead and email me. I'm gonna ask you Monday what you guys might've noticed about your nutrition over the week. So I'm gonna expect feedback. As we get in the last couple of weeks, I hope this has created an environment to where you guys feel comfortable talking on here and we can have open communication between us all. Okay, are there any questions for me? How did I do today? You did great. Oh, Pretty thanks. good. You did good. good. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the heart, Bruce. I like the hearts. All right. Anything else for me, guys? Any other questions, complaints, desires, needs? I need $100. I'm, I'm just joking. That's, that's me trying to be funny again. Okay. 
All right. Anything else for me, guys? No? All right, if there's nothing else, I'll hang out if you have any questions. Otherwise, we are done, and you guys did a great job today, so have a great day. Thank you, Coach. Okay. Hey, Coach Joe. I have a question about, um, like, map my run. Okay, go ahead, Matthew. Um, so, like, if I have, like, a GPS watch and, like, it syncs to, like, you know, like, Strava? Like, yeah. App Strava? No, you can. Can I, like, yeah. submit you can it via that? Yeah, turn it on Strava. That's totally fine. I have people turn on Strava in other classes all the time. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Perfect. Any other questions? Uh, did you receive the email I sent, I think, yesterday with the video? Yeah, I did. I haven't looked at it yet, but I, yeah, I figured it was you, Grace, but you didn't put I your... Think... So oh, I had... I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, I like your email address, though. That's cute. <laughs> I think I think it might ask you that you need access from me, so if you just click that, then I can give you the access for Okay, it. perfect. I'll look at it right now after class. Cool. Okay, have a good day. Thanks, Matt Reed, what happened? So yesterday while I was scooting, I got a concussion because I fell off a ledge. Okay, well, well, don't fall, don't do that. That's bad. Yeah, so I'm I'm not allowed to do any physical activities yeah. except for walking. Yeah, just do do your walk, okay, and get so better. How am I supposed to do the flip grid? Um, you'll we'll have to wait on it for you. Um, right. you'll, you'll, I'll open it up for you later. Now, here's a question: Is the computer hurting your your giving you headaches? Uh, no, it has a mode where I could change it to orange light instead of blue light. Okay. All right. Well, here, here's my advice to you. Don't fall off your scooter. Yeah. Okay? No more falling off scooter. Okay. Okay. Thank Get you. Get better, buddy. Okay. Cool. Bye. Bye. Alex, what's up? So, about TikTok, right? Yeah. It's getting banned, I heard. I, it might be banned. It might be. That's true. It, it is because it's actually trying to. It actually wrote an article about this in my speech class. It says it's actually trying to. It's trying to spy where actually is. It's just saying. Yeah, that's what they say, but I, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. So here, here's my question for you. Yeah. How are we going to get you turning your flip grids? Oh, no idea. I mean, it's still kind of problematic. I, I can see that being a problematic thing. It's not problematic, but here's the thing you're comfortable with your camera on during this class doing yeah, it. It's just... What's the difference with flip grids? I'm terrible. I'm not, I'm not the most comfortable person doing things in like live sort of scenarios, if you get well, what this, I mean. This is live. No, no, I'm talking about like, like actually like recording it. Like, it's just I'm kind of bad. So, so how about you do this where you explain it to me, okay? So. First, first of all, mm -hmm. I want to help you to be comfortable. You understand that? Yeah. Yeah. Safe space indeed. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, uh, and, and that's like my, my big thing is to help you be comfortable.